Assalamu alaikum Sayyidi. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah. So what did Sayyidina Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq mean when he said for every book there is a secret and all of its secrets are in the Quran in the opening letters of the chapters? The secret of huruf and muqata'at, these are keys, they are not uh, letters that nobody knows. When somebody says those are letters that nobody knows, that person is saying they know nothing. But Allah put everything and put somebody to know what He put, otherwise Allah is not in need to make codes for Himself. <laughs> Why is that Allah makes a code and says, uh, I'm just going to keep it for myself? Why? The whole of creation is Allah's secret. So these are codes in which Allah grant a, a reality and a knowledge. They say when Allah want to grant somebody sainthood, He teaches him the meaning of the huruf, that when Allah gives them the meaning of the huruf means then the huruf and the reality and angelic reality are speaking to that one and inspiring within their heart. We talked last night on these new languages, these languages that are coming into existence in 200, 300 years, all of a satanic background. And these ancient languages that are all codes and all energy and every sound and every vibration has a reality. And Allah is the creator and manifester of all of these realities. So that shows the immensity of Islam and how these people are using words and using vibrations and sounds and bringing in negative energies for people. But can you imagine that the power that Allah has created encoded that into Holy Qur'an which Qur'an is from Qaf and its last letter is a noon, means Allah's qudra and quwwa and power of a Divine reality that we can't understand its power that it only is a fire so immense, Goliath nahru kuni bardan wa salaman ala Ibrahim, it's such a powerful power of fire that its only coolness is to move into the soul and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad and become cool and peaceful for all of creation. The immensity of that power, it starts with Qaf of Qur'an and its last letter is a noon which emanates nur and light. It is the source of all light and the light of all sources. Nurul Anwar wa Sirat al Asrar means that every secret coming from that light and that's the light of every secret. So the immensity of the power that Allah gave in this Qur'an and now how to unlock its realities. So studying on our website from Mawlana Shah Naqshaban's teaching all the way to Mawlana Shaykh's heart comes out the secrets of the Muqattat. These are the hurufs that are encoding certain surahs of the Qur'an but more important is also the understanding and the learning of all of the huruf, that the reality of this huruf. So Qur'an starts with Alif Lam Mim from Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem, Surat Al-Fatiha Alif Lam Mim and we've talked many times, there's other talks on that, that that's a code. And that's a code that opens up the secret of creation that from Allah's Alif is Izzatullah on, on no shariq, no partner, nothing attaches to that alif, Allah's alif is dressing that lamb and that lamb is the lisan and the tongue of all realities. So already the code is given to us of the Muhammadan haqqaiq because Allah's showing us in that huruf, my alif nothing can contain it but I have created a lisan, a lamb, a tongue that will manifest all my realities and it's meem from Muhammad. So already that opens up for us the Muhammadan key is essential for understanding the Qur'an.
So alhamdulillah these are the, the codes within Holy Qur'an and these are the, the realities connected to the soul and the reality of Prophet None of it can be opened, none of it can be attained, no power from it can be extracted la hawla wa la quwwata except by the Muhammadan key and the presence and the reality of Sayyidina Muhammad He is the meme of Allah Bahr al-Muhit, the all-encompassing ocean for everything that's manifesting. So that is a Muhammadan key in that huruf and that opens the Qur'an and its realities and its oceans of power inshaAllah. Walaykum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa rahmatullah Sayyidi, what can one do when absorbing emotions of others who are going through difficulties like loved ones, also when involved in healthcare services and so exposed continuously? Exposed to the energies and difficulties of loved ones and exposed to any type of energy, that's the, all the energy practices that you have to get from the timeless reality that goes into all the meditation energies, how to take your work, come home and wash, immediately change the clothes and the energy from work washing to sanctify oneself and to lift and wash away the burdens that are being put upon people in those types of environments. That emotions and energy are very contagious, not something you can control nor keep away. It will be cast upon a person uh, irregardless but the best that we can do is to keep always our wudu, to keep our taweez, to keep all of what Allah has brought for us, Prophet has brought for us as protections. As a result you protect yourself from anything negative but if Allah want to send a sadness from somebody it's like a dress, it's like a shirt. Somebody's depressed or, or sad or, or, or burdened or, or upset, that dress will be thrown upon the soul of pious people, people whom are spiritually practicing different spiritual practices. As a result you may become saddened and depressed and you don't even know why, there was nothing wrong with you to be depressed but that means that you're carrying something. So you become more careful of who you're interacting with and, and not uh, going too deep into people's problems and sorrows and difficulties and trying to teach people how to keep a positive outlook and, and a positive understanding. That's one for our protection and to wash and to take away the energies, meditate, make sure that you're strong with your connection. Every time you connect, you're connecting with a heavenly power to wash away all of the difficulties from earth. But also important in that understanding is the words in our dialogue that we use. That's what they're trying to open from last night is that we don't truly understand the magnificence of Islam and what Prophet brought for us until we study the dark side of it. When we understand that people talk negative and they cast a spell with on themselves, that's why tariqah doesn't allow complaining. Don't complain to somebody and don't let somebody use your ear as a complaint. It's completely tariq al-adab and against the adab of the tariqah. Why? Now we understand from the casting of spells that when you say, I'm depressed, I'm sorry, you're manifesting that state much more powerful now. You don't understand how powerful you are as a human. I'm sad, I'm upset, I'm this, I'm that. Everything that shaitan is putting into our heart to speak and as soon as we complain and I'm worried, I'm sad, you're actually manifesting that energy, that state and bringing it out. And as a result empowering that state, so actually depressed people if they keep saying they're depressed they will become in a deeper depression because the negativity is actually like a casting of a spell that pulls them down and that's all the shaitan wants, complain. So then they, they start to talk you know always saying and then if they talk with someone like us we said, don't talk like that, this is against your faith. That's why everything that's been taught to us is you say, alhamdulillah, if you're not feeling good, alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah because don't cast 
a difficulty upon yourself, I'm so worried, I'm so scared, I'm so sick, I'm so sad, I'm so… you're making that to manifest and you begin to talk to somebody else, you're now throwing that manifestation onto them and they become now depressed. You're, you're creating an environment of an energy that's going down. So then Prophet brought for us, there's not a single hadith that says to talk like that. So it means that Prophet brought for us is always move your energy up. No matter the difficulty say, alhamdulillah because it could be a lot worse. Inna lillahi wa lillahi raji'oon that always a reminder of a heavenly power. Don't focus on the negativity, don't cast a negative spell upon yourself. Somebody say, oh just you, you don't talk, let me, let me say all my, the things I want to say bad. Don't, you're casting a spell upon yourself. We say, alhamdulillah, that's why the cure for depression is alhamdulillah wa shukran lillah. Alhamdulillah, oh, praise be to God because only Allah can take me out of a sadness and depression. And shukran lillah is that I'm not being ungrateful because if Allah's listening and saying, you seem to be pretty ungrateful, you're complaining with all that you have but look this one has no even rice to eat and they don't talk like you. So we don't want now that Allah angered against us so that we're casting spells against ourselves, and Allah even then becomes more angered by the servant. So it means that everything that's being brought out and its understanding is for a significant battle with energy that's coming now. So if the people don't know how to use energy and bring out a positive source, the kids love to watch these science fiction movies and they say, oh look, look how they brought in energy and they're fighting. I said, but you're more powerful than that. Unfortunately, you just don't see the energy. That when you start to make du'as, there's an immense amount of light beginning. So those whom their hearts are open, when they make salawats an immense green light begins to appear. And you, you fill yourself with that light, it's all around the one who's making salawats. So these are already energies and, and powers that you're putting upon yourself. So the zikr that you're making, all these things that you're making are producing energy. So there's immense amounts of lights in these associations, in homes, wherever these, these, these uh, salawats and praisings are, are being heard and being chanted. So as a result of making these praisings, we're now manifesting positive energies. Alhamdulillah that all praise be to God that only He can relieve my condition. That's why then the adab and tariqahs were teaching these adabs that don't, don't, don't say these things, don't keep talking negative, you're casting and cursing yourself. And look at the language that the people use. They use a word damn and then they use a Divine word attached with it. They're asking for damnation from the Divine, I mean who the heck would talk like this? You have to be a drunken uh, person with no brain to actually ask for the damnation of the Divinely Presence to be upon you. So it's a corrupt understanding, corrupt language, corrupt ideology and what Prophet brought for us is a shining light for all of humanity. When the world begins to understand and wake up and they are waking up. Because they are making videos that saying, how come our language and, and lack of culture is so disgusting? And why are these other nations that are more ancient, they speak differently? They greet each other with peace and blessings be upon you. Anything that happens they say, alhamdulillah. If somebody praises you, Prophet describes they're cursing you. Oh, you're so great, you're, you're amazing, you're, you're so like fantastic. So what the tariqah came and taught us, say astaghfirullah and people, other people are like, why did you just ask for God's forgiveness because I know what you don't know and you're praising and God doesn't like praising on, on a person and my ego is the one being fed by this sickness so I'm asking God's forgiveness before a difficulty comes that He wants to humble me with it. So we say astaghfirullah and when something good came to you in life, you were rewarded with somebody, we said, MashaAllah that God has willed it, not you gave it to me nor you took it away from me other than Allah is the only one who can bring anything to me. So then the superiority of the language and the vocabulary means the artillery and the armory 
and the, the ability to battle this negativity, it's only been given by Prophet The immensity of, of what Prophet brought for us in the last days will become apparent. I don't think in any other time it was relevant like that. But in the last days when they start to reveal how much these people have magic, how much their language is about destroying and destruction and, and bringing down the energy of people. And now we can see how much Prophet empowered us and gave us a vocabulary, gave us a Qur'an, gave us a sense of energy that has an immense power and protection. So SubhanAllah again, again glory only be to Allah that He guided us and guidance is only from Allah and the immensity of guidance is so powerful inshaAllah. As salaamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Sayyidi Wa alaykum as salaam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Sayyidi, how is the Jannah of Muhammadiyoon different from other paradise like Jannat al-Firdaus, Jannah Naeem and others? Every paradise is based on what you wanted. You're, you're a creation that has the ability to manifest, right? So imagine then you're asking for this paradise or that paradise, this paradise, that paradise and this is the extent of what you knew. So as a result of asking that paradise, that's what you'll attain. And when Allah want to guide the servant, that's why you can't ask for what you don't know. And if Allah guides a servant, He gives them knowledge and gives them a name in which to call something, to find something, to be directed to something and as a result of that it opens a door for a reality for them. So even just listening to a shaykh, you write what the shaykh has been teaching you, your whole destiny changed because now your book has different realities in it other than your day-to-day -day activity. So then as soon as you accompany guidance the shaykh say, don't pray for these paradises, pray for that which is above what they call everything will collapse, everything will disappear except the Divinely face. Don't pray for things that will disappear and be brought down, even paradises will collapse when Allah brings judgment. But Ya Rabbi we want that which is eternal and will never go and that's Wajallah, Wajik al the, the the Divine face of all generosity. So even accompanying these awliyaullah they took our du'as to such an extent and reality that can't be imagined. Don't pray for that which is perishing and that's why then all the awliya you read their writings they say that they don't fear paradise and I'm not ask, I'm not fear jahannam and I'm not asking for your paradise, I'm asking for your Divinely face Ya Rabbi, I'm asking for that which never perishes and that's the importance, they teach us. That the things you don't know, don't pray for like that, pray for the highest of the realities, that which never perishes. And then Allah describes those servants in Qur'an, they, those whom they, they feed people, they take care of these servants, they feed them not for anything from you but they feed them for the sake of the Divinely face. Means and then these are a caliber of awliyaullah who understood this reality that all they want from that Divinely face, that's why when, when their lights come and they begin to make du'a the face begins to appear to them. As it appears to them it's dressing their seven essences from that Divinely face. As a result of that dress Allah describes each from them and they feed you for the sake of Allah's Divinely face, Wajah Allah. And the, the translators they try to take that word out. But Allah describes this category of servants of Allah that their good works and good deeds and they feed humanity. We said before it's not only the feeding of food but their knowledge is a food for the soul that lasts all of eternity. If I give you a kebab for one bite and it goes into your stomach and out of your body, what's the benefit? But if I give you a knowledge and teach you a knowledge that lasts all of your eternity, 
then this is something that is, is not something understood and has a Divine reality for all of eternity. Those servants they do that service because they want the Divine face, they want the nazar of Allah the nazar of Sayyidina Muhammad As soon as that Divinely Wajik al Kareem generous face begins to gaze upon them and they see the face and begin to be dressed by its realities and blessed by its realities inshaAllah. <coughs> As Salaamu Alaikum Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Sayyidi, does the shaykh know us even if we never met physically? Shaykh know you even if you never met physically? I'm sure the shaykh knows you if you never met physically because you have to be first in the heavenly association in the presence of Prophet in the presence of all the shaykhs everything has to be partitioned from the world of light. So in the world of light they know each other. Now the physicality is not in need of knowing, that doesn't, that doesn't make any difference. The work that's being done is from the soul. The physical shaykh, his physical body is not sitting all day long and this one because when you come to talk to the shaykh it's not like him. When you come to talk to the shaykh and say, oh you know my uncle needs this, my aunt needs this, my grandma needs this, my two uncles need this, they have a red shoe like this, they have a… You're giving information for them thinking as if you keep talking something is being answered. That's not their system. Is you bring your body or your fingers or type into a state of humility to ask. As soon as you ask you opened up Allah's world of light. Where your soul now entered into their presence and begins to ask and make munajat and ask du'a. And their souls without any ego saying, Ameen, Ameen. They're taking all those du'as and they're presenting those to their shaykhs, to the presence and it becomes computer language. We've talked about this before. Anybody who's a programmer understands this symbol of a pyramid. The code is very general on the bottom of this pyramid and each code is being cleaned and brought up, cleaned and brought up, cleaned and brought up, right? Your, your coding, it takes out the bugs and takes it to a higher code, takes out the bugs, takes it to a higher code. The soul of awliyas are in the same symbol that all the souls of awliya they're hearing the du'as of people. They're cleaning those du'as, taking the bugs and darkness and negativity out of them and then presenting them to the higher level awliya. And those higher level awliya have a different gift and different type of cleansing and they take it like machine language all the way up to machine language. Machine language nobody can program at machine language and that's between one and zero. Means they take it all the way up to the presence of Prophet to be pure and purified. And Prophet described, I have a face with Allah and I have a face with creation. Means that I'm receiving what creation is asking for. If their amal is good, I thank Allah. If the amal is bad, I ask for forgiveness from Allah. That's machine language. That's a binary state in which Prophet soul is eternally on directed towards Allah and eternally on directed towards creation because he can never be off. Ayatul Kursi describes that reality of Prophet that his sleep and slumber never overtakes him otherwise how he can manage creation if he was falling asleep. So means all these coatings or from souls going to the presence of Prophet taking away every negativity and everything bad, nobody will present anything negative to that reality. And that's why these awliya become sickened and, and difficulty because they're carrying and cleaning these burdens to be presented higher and higher up to the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. <coughs> Walaykum As Salaam wa Rahmatullah Is it possible to get the permission back to my heart after being tricked into giving it to jinns thinking it was someone that I used to adore? A permission? <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> 
yeah you have to make tawbah and what do you think you gave them, you have to make istighfar and, and make your connection. Email helpme at nurmuhammad.com, take the process of the connection, making the madad, making the istighfar and you, you give certain permissions and, and certain openings to, to different beings but you can't give your, your secret to anyone because they don't have the secret. And that can only be attained through very high levels of purifications and, and testings and cleansing. So these are different things, anybody feeling a difficulty they, they can pray for forgiveness, pray for openings, take away difficulties but that's something different than the realities and the openings upon the soul. As Alaikum Shaykh Walaykum As Salaam wa If one is to sacrifice dunya how can one be ambitious in their life for success, wealth though, without being classified with those who don't receive their treasures being dunya oriented? Hmm? What was that again? Um, if, if one is to sacrifice dunya, how, yeah. how can one be ambitious in their life for success, wealth? without being classified with those who don't receive their treasures being dunya oriented. Yeah I think we've talked about that before that uh, following the tariqah doesn't mean you're sacrificing dunya. So that, that's you know that's your, your look on reality. It's not the reality changing, oh now I'm in tariqah I, I don't have anything of dunya and I have to stand in line and, and ask for bread from people, that's not tariqah. Especially not Naqshbandiya, the shaykhs want you to work really hard and make big support and make the tariqah to be strong. You have to be strong in all of your activities, it's your understanding that's important. Means that people work to become a slave for dunya and they think they're going to work for a company all their life and they're going to achieve all these different titles in their work and their whole life becomes their work when that dunya becomes their master. So Sayyidina Umar Salam teaching, no that you make dunya to be your slave and that you're the master. As long as you remain in the position of being a master then dunya comes to serve you as a servant of Allah So as soon as they serve Allah correctly, Allah bring all of dunya onto their feet to give them whatever they're in need of. So they're not poor. And they're not in need from anything from anyone. So why is that? Because Allah granted them the servanthood that if you serve Allah serve Sayyidina Muhammad and you took from your heart, oh I have to conquer this, I have to get this degree, I have to get this position at the job, my whole life is going to be for work. You say, no, no, I'm going to do the work and I'm just going to get the money that I have to get, I'm going to go do that but my heart's not in that. Then at any time Allah when He accepts the servanthood and they do their awrad, they do their zikrs, they do their wazifas, they do everything, Allah then make dunya to fall at their feet because their understanding is correct and their connection is correct. So the tariqah especially Naqshbandiya then is not asking for people to be impoverished and go on into bread lines asking for bread but if you have to ask for bread then alhamdulillah that's not a problem either. But the tariqah is to be strong in the character, doing strong with the adab and, and all of the etiquettes like a spider. You make your web and wait for Allah to send the flies and to send the rizq. But if you're going to be like a bear out into the, the woods hunting all day long then you're not ha having any time for your zikrs, your awrads or your practices and Allah doesn't need that because then you, you lose your akhirah in that, in that understanding. InshaAllah. Subhan rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon wa salaam ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Illa sharif wa nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala sahbihi kiram wa ala mashaykhina fi tariqatina shbandiyatan aliyya wa sayru sadatina sadaqeen al-fatiha. Alhamdulillah inshaAllah for all those uh, online thank you for joining. Thank you for all the questions, mashaAllah great questions. 
they seem to be getting deeper and deeper and uh, that's good, that's a good sign that, that, that uh, we're all in it and practicing and understanding. This power of speech and the manifestation of speech, everybody to, to meditate on that, to think about that and then uh, we can go a little bit deeper in that because the immensity of it is just touching on the iceberg of how much we speak and how much negativity is being casted and how much the potential of the zikrs, the awrad, the dalai al khirat that people don't understand why I have to recite all these things. It's not that you have to but just imagine the immensity of the power that you're able to do and you begin to manifest energies and manipulate energies just based on these positive recitations and the immensity of, of healing that when you want to heal somebody they're sick with an energy and you begin to recite over them then their energies are, are changing as a matter of these recitations for children, for loved ones and for families. We pray that everybody to be happy, be safe until we see everybody tomorrow night inshaAllah bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.